America or the New World. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Bologna Times. America or the New World from the New Gresham Encyclopedia, Volume One, Part One by Various. The largest of the great divisions of the globe, except Asia, is washed on the west by the Pacific. On the east by the Atlantic, on the north by the Arctic Ocean, while on the south it tapers to a point. On the northwest it approaches within about fifty miles of Asia, while on the northeast the island of Greenland approaches within three hundred and seventy miles of the European island Iceland. But in the south the distance between the American mainland and Europe or Africa is very great. Extreme points of the continent, north, Boothia Felix, at the Strait of Belot, latitude seventy two degrees north, south, Cape Horn, latitude fifty six degrees south, west, Cape Prince of Wales, longitude one hundred and sixty eight degrees west, east, Point de Goya, longitude thirty five degrees west. America as a whole forms the two triangular continents of North and South America, united by the narrow isthmus of Panama, and having an entire length of about 10,000 miles, a maximum breadth in North America of 3,500 miles, a coastline of 44,000 miles, and a total area, including the islands, of over 16 million of which North America contains about 8,300,000 square miles. South America is more compact in form than North America, in this respect resembling Africa, while North America more resembles Europe. Between the two on the east side is the Great Basin, which comprises the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean Sea, and the West India Islands. Like Europe, also, North America possesses numerous islands, while those of South America are less important and confined almost to the southern extremity. Three-fourths of the area of America is comparatively flat, and this portion of the surface is bounded on the west by lofty mountain systems which stretch continuously from north to south between the extremities of the continent, generally at no great distance from the west shore. In North America, the Rocky Mountains, a broad series of masses, partly consisting of plateau, form the most important portion of the elevated surface, being continued southward in the mountains and tableland of Mexico and the ranges of Central America. Separated by depressions from the Rocky Mountains proper and running close to and parallel with the western coast are several lofty ranges, Sierra Nevada, Cascade Mountains, etc. Near the eastern coast, and forming an isolated mass, are the Appalachians, a system of much inferior magnitude. The loftiest mountains in North America are McKinley, 20,470 feet, in Alaska, Logan, 19,514 feet, in northwest Canada, and Popocatepetl, 18,000 feet, the depression of the isthmus of panama about two hundred and sixty feet forms a natural separation between the systems of the north and the south in south america the andes form a system of greater elevation but less breadth than the rocky mountains and consist of a series of ranges cordilleras closely following the line of the west coast from the isthmus of panama to cape horn the highest summits are Aconcagua, 23,080 feet, Sorata or Ilampu, 21,484 feet, and Sahama, 21,054 feet. Volcanoes are numerous. Isolated mountain groups of minor importance are the highlands of Venezuela and of Brazil, the latter near the eastern coast, reaching a height of 10,000 feet. The fertile lowlands, which lie to the east of the Rocky Mountains and the Andes, form a depression extending through both continents from the northern to the southern oceans. 
they have somewhat different features and different names in different portions in north america are prairies and savannas in south america ilanos selvas and pampas through these low grounds flow the numerous great rivers which form so characteristic a feature of america the principal are the mackenzie coppermine and great fish rivers entering the northern ocean the churchill nelson severn and albany entering hudson's bay the st lawrence entering the atlantic mississippi and rio del norte entering the gulf of mexico all these being in north america the magdalena orinoco amazon paranahiba rio de la plata colorado and rio negro entering the atlantic all in south america and the yukon fraser columbia san joaquin sacramento and colorado entering the pacific the rivers which flow into the pacific however owing to the fact that the great backbone of the continent the rocky mountains and the andes lies so near the west coast are of comparatively little importance in south america being all quite small sometimes rivers traversing the same plains and nearly on the same levels open communications with each other a remarkable instance being the casiquiari in south america which branching off from the rio negro and joining the orinoco forms a kind of natural canal uniting the basins of the orinoco and the amazon the amazon or marañon in south america the largest river in the world has a course of about thirty five hundred miles and a basin of two million three hundred thousand square miles the mississippi missouri the largest river of north america runs a longer course than the amazon but the area of its basin is not nearly so great north america has the most extensive group of lakes in the world lakes superior michigan huron erie and ontario which through the st lawrence send their drainage to the atlantic thus by means of lakes and rivers the interior of both north and south america is opened up and made accessible in regard to climate north america naturally differs very much from south america and has more resemblance to the continents of europe and asia regarded as a whole in north america as in the older continent the eastern parts are colder than the western and hence the towns on the atlantic coast have a winter temperature about ten degrees lower than those in corresponding latitudes in europe the winter temperature of the greater part of north america is indeed severe though the intense cold is less felt on account of the dryness of the air there is no regular season of rainfall unless in the south although two-thirds of south america lies within the tropics the heat is not so great as might be expected owing to the prevailing winds the influences of the andes and other causes the highest temperature experienced is probably not more than one hundred degrees in the shade at rio de janeiro the mean is about seventy four degrees at lima seventy two degrees over a great part of south america there is a wet and a dry season varying in different regions on the upper amazon the rains last for ten months being caused by the prevailing easterly winds bringing moisture from the atlantic which is condensed on the eastern slopes of the andes in each of the americas there is a region in which little or no rain falls in north america it extends over a part of the united states and northern mexico in south america over a part of the coast region of peru and chile america is rich in valuable minerals it has supplied the world with immense quantities of gold and silver which it still yields in no small amount especially in the united states it possesses inexhaustible stores of coal united states with iron copper lead tin mercury etc petroleum may be called one of its specialities its petroleum wells having caused whole towns to spring into existence diamonds and other precious stones are found as regards vegetation america may be called a region of forests and verdure vast tracts being covered by the grassy prairies ilanos 
and pampas where the forests fail in north america the forests have been largely made use of by man in south america vast areas are covered with forests which as yet are traversed only by the uncivilized indian in the north is the region of pines and firs farther south come the deciduous trees as the oak beech maple elm chestnut etc then follow the evergreen forests of the tropical regions the useful timber trees are very numerous among the most characteristic of america are mahogany and other ornamental woods and various dye woods in the tropical parts are numerous palms cacti in great variety and various species of the agave or american aloe in the virgin forests of south america the trees are often bound together into an impenetrable mass of vegetation by various kinds of climbing and twining plants among useful plants belonging to the american continent are maize the potato cacao tobacco cinchona vanilla paraguay tea etc the most important plants introduced are wheat rice and other grains sugar-cane coffee and cotton with various fruits and vegetables the vine is native to the continent and both the american and introduced varieties are now largely cultivated the animals of america include among carnivora the jaguar or american tiger found only in south america the puma or american lion found mostly in south america the grizzly bear of north america fully as powerful an animal as either the black bear the skunk the raccoon the american or prairie wolf several species of foxes etc the rodents are represented by the beaver the porcupine and squirrels of several species the marsupials by the opossum among ruminants are the bison or as it is commonly called the buffalo the moose or elk the virginian stag the musk ox and in south america the llama which takes the place of the camel of the old world the alpaca and the vicuña other animals most distinctive of south america are sloths fitted to live only in its dense and boundless forests ant-eaters and armadillos monkeys with prehensile tails in this and other respects differing from those of the old world the condor among the heights of the andes the nandu rhea or three-toed ostrich beautiful parrots and hummingbirds among american reptiles are the boa constrictor the rattlesnake the alligator or caiman the iguana and other large lizards large frogs and toads the domestic animals of america horses cattle and sheep are of foreign origin the electrical eel exists in the tropical waters the population of america consists partly of an aboriginal race or races partly of immigrants or their descendants the aboriginal inhabitants are the american indians or red men being generally of a brownish red color and now forming a very small portion of the total population especially in north america where the white population has almost exterminated them these people are divided into branches some of which have displayed a considerable aptitude for civilization when the europeans became acquainted with the new world mexico central america and part of south america were inhabited by populations which had made great advances in many things that pertain to civilized life dwelling in large and well-built cities under a settled form of government and practicing agriculture and the mechanical arts ever since the discovery of america at the close of the fifteenth century europeans of all nations have crowded into it and the comparatively feeble native races have rapidly diminished or lost their distinctive features by intermixtures with whites and also with negroes brought from africa to work as slaves these mixed races are distinguished by a variety of names as mestizos mulattoes zambos etc 
in north america the white population is mainly of british origin though to a considerable extent it also consists of germans scandinavians etc and the descendants of such in central and south america the prevailing white nationality is the spanish and portuguese in the extreme north are the eskimos a scattered and stunted race closely allied to some of the peoples of northern asia that the aboriginal inhabitants of america passed over from asia is tolerably certain but when and from what part we do not know the total population of the new world is estimated at one hundred and eighty million of which perhaps one hundred and twenty four million are whites twenty eight million mixed races fifteen million negroes and thirteen million indians as regards religion the bulk of the population of north america is protestant of central and south america the religion is almost exclusively roman catholic several millions of the indians are heathens the independent states of america are all republican in form of government brazil having become a republic in eighteen eighty nine see north america central america south america west indies etc the merit of first opening up the american continent to modern europe belongs to the genoese navigator christopher columbus who discovered in october fourteen ninety two one of the bahamas and named it san salvador europeans however had on different former occasions discovered the american coasts and the coasts of massachusetts and rhode island were visited by northmen and named vinland in the year one thousand still these discoveries had no influence on the enterprise of columbus and cannot detract in the least from his merit they were forgotten and had never been made known to the inhabitants of the rest of europe though columbus was the first of his time who set foot in the new world it has taken its name not from him but from amerigo vespucci the mainland was first seen in fourteen ninety seven by sebastian cabot who sailed under the patronage of henry the seventh of england for further particulars of discovery see north america and south america the known history of america hardly goes beyond the period of its discovery by columbus but it possesses many monuments of antiquity that might take us many centuries backward could we learn anything of their origin or of those by whom they were produced among such antiquities are great earthworks in the form of mounds or of raised enclosures crowning the tops of hills river peninsulas etc and no doubt serving for defense they enclose considerable areas are surrounded by an exterior ditch and by ramparts which are composed of mingled earth and stones and are often of great extent in proportion to the area enclosed they are always supplied either naturally or artificially with water and give other indications of having been provided for a siege barrows and tumuli containing human bones and bearing indications of having been used both as places of sepulture and as temples are also numerous they are in geometrical forms circles squares parallelograms etc a mound on the plain of cahokia in illinois opposite the city of st louis is seven hundred feet long five hundred feet broad and ninety feet high earth mounds of another class represent gigantic animal forms in bas-relief on the ground one is a man with two heads the body fifty feet long and twenty-five feet broad across the breast another represents a serpent one thousand feet in length with graceful curves the monuments of mexico central america and peru are of a more advanced state of civilization approach nearer to the historical period and make the loss of authentic information more keenly felt here there are numerous ruined towns with most elaborate sculptures lofty pyramidal structures serving as temples or forts statues picture writing hieroglyphics roads aqueducts bridges etc 
some remarkable prehistoric remains discovered in recent years are what are known as the abodes of the cliff dwellers these consist of habitations constructed on terraces and in caves high up and steep sides of canyons in colorado and other parts of the western states of north america some of these buildings are several stories high see also mexico peru etc bibliography l ferrand the american nation prescott the conquest of mexico and the conquest of peru windsor narrative and critical history of america f w halsey great epics in american history eleven volumes end of america or the new world by various